Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second session in our new Tips and Tricks series, Agentless Monitoring with Tripwire Enterprise with John Salmi. I'm Liz Fox, Senior Marketing Events Coordinator at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of today's event. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. You'll notice that there are several widgets at the bottom of the screen. Here you can engage with your fellow participants via the group chat, access resources, and submit questions for our Q&A section. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, please click on the help widget. Our speaker will remain on the line to answer questions at the conclusion of the webinar, so please make sure to submit your questions via the Q&A widget. We'll also be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand webcast at the conclusion of the webinar. So now, let's get on with the event. Today's speaker, John Salmi, is a senior security engineer at Tripwire and an accomplished and well-rounded technology professional with over 30 years of experience in the IT industry. His background ranges from system administration to operations, software engineering, development, and deployment of global command and control systems in consultative sales. So now, without further delay, I will turn it over to John. Thank you, and good day, all. Uh, thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we're going to cover something today which is going, is going to be of interest to you. Uh, some housekeeping. There is a group chat available in your widgets. I'm going to encourage you to use that to, first and foremost, chat amongst yourselves. And uh, if you would, just drop in uh, where you're from. I'm curious. I mean, do we have people from, you know, off the continental United States? That would be really interesting. So, um, Tripwire Enterprise. Tripwire Enterprise, as we know, is pretty much the de facto file integrity monitoring product on the market. Oh, one bit, one more thing. The camera's here, everything else is here. So. I'm going to spend as much time as I can talking to you, but when I'm not, you're going to get my good side, okay? Just saying. Okay, Austin, Texas, Ohio, Arizona, Virginia, South Carolina. Cool, cool. Okay, back to TE. So Tripwire Enterprise. Um, as we know, Tripwire Enterprise is an agent-based technology. We drop an agent onto an endpoint, and from there we'll do baselining, and once we have the baseline built, we're going to monitor that endpoint. Well, what happens if I have an unsupported device? What is an unsupported device? Well, for example, let's say I build a network switch in my garage and I call it John's switch, okay? And I put some public domain operating system on it, which is SSH accessible, okay? I can plug my new network switch into my network and as long as I can get there with SSH, I'm gonna be able to monitor that device, okay? Let's just use the Cisco world for an example. I can log into the device, issue a show run, a show config, and use that data to A, build my baseline, or B, compare against my baseline. Okay, so now let's apply that to an operating system such as FreeBSD. Uh, we have a very large list of supported platforms. In your favorite search engine, type in Tripwire Enterprise Supported Platforms, and uh, you will be presented with the list. FreeBSD has never been on that list and probably never will be. However, if I have FreeBSD in my environment and I do want to do file integrity monitoring, on how do I do that? Well, that's why we're here. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Now, during a test run of this, I've noticed that when I move windows back and forth, I'm going to be opening reports, closing nodes, things like that. Uh, there may be some artifacts left behind on the screen. So in that respect, I am going to be moving between desktops. If I do this, if I flip to this desktop and then flip back, come on, repaint, okay. It's repainted, okay, so please bear with me, okay? I have the view that you're seeing in front of me here, and if there is, if there are artifacts left over, I'm, I'm going to be doing that switch, okay? So, first and foremost, uh, let's create a new node. In Tripwire Enterprise, I'm going to select a root node group because this is where everything starts, right? From the root. 
Let's select new node. Now, we have a lot of options here. For example, if I'm gonna monitor a database, I can build a node for Oracle, for SQL Server, okay? If I wanna to, want to monitor LDAP, right? I have a number of options there as well. When we build an unsupported operating system node, that is going to be considered a network node within Tripwire Enterprise because we're using the same methodology to access that node as we do network devices, okay? And with that said, we're going to consume a network device license, all right? So under my network devices, I have Unix system. Let's give it a name, and this is going to be the FQDN. Okay, it can be an IP address, a DNS name, etc. cetera. Uh, I happen to have one in my lab called FreeBSD2. BSD2.solmy.lab. I'm going to use SSH to get there. And since I'm using SSH, I'm going to use SCP to pull my results back from that node. For a username, uh, Tripwire Enterprise has the concept of global variables. So I've got a variable built for my Linux root account. Let's see if it shows up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use my Linux root account. And I've got another variable built for my Linux root password. So I'm going to utilize that. Okay, we've got our credentials. And I can hit finish. So I've got an agentless nodes smart root built here. Okay. And once that initial connection with the node, the, the Tripwire Enterprise Engine is now reaching out to that node using those credentials to ensure that we can build the connection. Okay. Once that is done, that node is going to show up in our list here. So you can see I have another free BSD node here. And the reason I have this here is so as the node is being baselined, uh, we're gonna be able to walk through what, we're, what we baselined against, what those rules look like, and uh, how we monitor that moving forward, okay? So our new node has shown up. I want, I'm gonna just kick off the baseline process. So I select the node, I select baseline, and here are my Linux FreeBSD rules. And I'm simply gonna select the root of that group, and tell it to carry on. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And now, once our baseline is built, right, that we have something to work with, okay? That is our known good state. As we move forward and we run checks against that, we'll, for the most part, we're gonna use a task, a Tripwire Enterprise task. So I have some tasks built. There's agentless nodes. So here is my FreeBSD change audit task, okay? First we give it a name, I give it a timeout. I'm gonna run this as the system user. Now, why do we do this? I could run it as my user. However, if in fact my user ID is removed from Tripwire Enterprise sometime down the road and I am assigned to run this task, well, this task will not run because my user credentials do not exist any longer. So my best practice is to always use the system user, okay? We select our node, which currently is FreeBSD. We select our rules, which are, again, our FreeBSD rules, okay? Give you an idea of what we're looking at here. And we assign a schedule to it, so I run this every day at 6.30 a.m., and that's the task. So every day at 6.30 a.m., I'm going to check the current state of that FreeBSD node against the baseline, okay? Let's take a look at the rules that we built. Now, since FreeBSD is not supported, we had to get a little bit creative, okay? So, um, you know, I need to refresh. I'm, I'm going to switch back and forth between the desktops here, make sure we're fresh again. All right, so administrative binaries. Now, when I got on, I logged into the FreeBSD node and I began to look around. What directories are specific to system-related binaries? So we have the slash sbin directory and the user sbin directory. When I built this rule, we're using 
built-in system utilities. I'm hoping this is going to show up. Bear with me a moment again. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm using find built-in Linux Unix utility. Okay. I say I want to find I want to find everything in the slash sbin directory, which is of a type f or type file. Right? If I want to find directories, this would be type D. Once I get that list, so I'm doing a loop here for every file in that list, I'm going to do a, a long listing of that. So I'm going to show all the attributes of that file. I'm going to insert a space. Then I'm going to echo back the MD5 checksum of that file. Okay? And once I have all that data, I run it through awk. Awk is a text processor or a, a, a data extraction tool. How's that? And what I'm doing with awk is saying, I want to print out these specific fields, and I'm going to give them a, some labels, right? I didn't want to do that. Sorry, I want to do that. So I have, I'm going to print out permissions. I'm going to print out the user ID, the group ID, the size of the file, and the MD5 sum. Simple enough. Okay. Now, that's for a directory. What about a specific file? So I'm going to drill into our files here, and bear with me, I'm going to refresh again. OK. So the Etsy directory, I walk through the same process, right? Find slash Etsy, everything that's a file type file, and run that process against it. That show me the, the name of the file, the size, the owner, the group, check some, OK? But for a specific file, like, for example, the Etsy password file, all I'm doing is cat Etsy password. Right? I just want the contents. Pretty darn simple. When I do that, I'm then going to create an element called Etsy password. The baseline is made up of elements. An element is, just as we see here, the output of cat Etsy password. In the agent-based world, I could do the same thing. I could say, show me the contents of Etsy password. Right? And the agent takes care of that for us. In this case, we have to be a bit more manual, right? Using all these built-in system utilities. All right, so we have our content, right? And so we've got well, we've got boot files. I chose some library files. Catch up here. Uh, system binaries, similar to administrative binaries, right? System binaries slash bin slash user bin and user local bin, because all of these again contain files that I want to monitor. Variable files, what's in slash var slash lib? So I'm going to take everything out of there. Now, when I build this baseline, here, let me bring the term up here. What I'm doing is, again, here's my file name. I'm going to do a long listing of that file. I'm going to echo a space, so I have a delimiter. And then I'm going to echo out the MD5 sum of that file. Now, this is the raw data, right? So this is what I'm going to have to parse with awk, right? This is what an element, a portion of that element, an entry of that element, per se, is going to look like, OK? Again, file name. Permissions, ownership, group, size of the file, and the MD5 hash of that file. Okay, so um, let's take a look at what happens when we find changes. Bear with me as I switch desktops again. So my initial FreeBSD node, I'm going to drill down into the node, into the rules, and take a look at a couple of changes. My system configuration files, OK? So when we walked the slash etc directory, we found changes. So if we take a look at this modification, now, this is simply comparing what I grabbed the first time when I walked through the directory, did the ls-l and the md5 checksum of each of those files. Okay, so the element, the original element is on the left, right? 
and the change is on the right. So what happened? We had a size here. Oh, oh it didn't change. Oh, it's that it's a checksum. So I went a little hog wild with the password set, the, the, the password data here. I grabbed Etsy password. I also grabbed the pwd.database and the shadow password.database as well as something called master.password. A little bit overkill, sure, but for demo purposes, it works. Okay. So for example, Etsy password, uh, we had the original size of 1,674 bytes, and now I've got 1,600 or excuse me, 1,732 bytes, okay? Okay, so one element. If we take a look at the password element itself, okay, we caught up, catching up. Yes, okay, if we take a look at the password element itself, we're gonna be able to see those changes in detail, okay? So what, did, what happened here? In the original baseline, there's a secondary root user called Tour. Tour had no login shell associated with it, so the default was using the born shell. I modified that to use TC shell, okay? And I also added a user to the password file. So we're doing our comparisons. We're comparing everything in that Etsy directory, looking for changes to our original baseline, which was simply every file in Etsy did this, in fact, have a change from size, from ownership, from MD5 stuff, okay? And then we walked down each of those individual files, for example, cat Etsy password, and we found our change. I'm gonna look, give me just a moment here. I'm gonna look in the group chat. Do I have any experience with connecting HP for Tom? On that question, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go off the cuff here. On that question, uh, if you tell that to the HP Atala device, what does the dialog look like? Is it simply a login and password, or is there a command shell, for example? Uh, one of the systems that I have done monitoring on here is Photon, which is the underlying operating system for vCenter. So you stand up your, your vCenter Linux-based appliance, and when you log in as root, you're given a command shell. Right? You're not given bash or C shell or, T or, or born shell. You're given a menu system. So if you're, in fact, having to navigate that menu system, that may be using expect, right? And you may have to use something like expect, okay? And in the network device dialog boxes, when we're building a new network device, we have the option to uh, put in, I'm looking for this. If I find it, send this. So that may be an option. Please refresh. Okay, so here's our Etsy password file, right? Um, once we have all the changed data, the next thing we want to do is reporting on that data, okay? So we have a couple of re very basic reports that I built here. Okay, first, the changed elements are oh, showing. Stand by, let me refresh again. Thank you for bringing with me. So I have a very basic changed elements report, okay? Let's run that report and take a look. And on this node, I have eight changes. Slash root, any files in slash root that we, you know, we walk through the directory. Etsy host change, the Etsy directory changed, password database, password itself, shadow password database, master password, and group file. So here's where we caught our changes. If we want more detail, then we go to the node view, right, as we just did, and take a look at the individual elements, okay, to see what changed. Okay, so I'm gonna take a pause here, and okay. I see the questions in the Q&A. We will address those in the end, okay? Uh, I just happened to grab that one on the HP device because it, it, it was there. All right, so, oh, so I should have put the agenda, I'm sorry. Here's the agenda to follow. So again, agent-based Drupal Enterprise, probably the best in the market for doing integrity monitoring, okay? Now, the, the agent list monitoring that we're doing is integrity monitoring only, file only. There is another option for Tripwire Enterprise. It's a product called Tripwire Data Collector. 
What Tripwire Data Collector does is allow me to evaluate an endpoint which Data Collector has first discovered and then is also monitoring. So Tripwire Enterprise sends commands to Data Collector. Please go do this, monitor. Go do some checking, right? Here's a task, run against those, those nodes. What Data Collector then does is evaluate all those nodes against the rules we baselined against, but we can also do policy evaluation. So for example, if I want to evaluate nodes against PCI or HIPAA or DISA or NIS or fill in the blank, security framework, I have the ability to do that as well. Now, the methodology we're using here for agentless is free, okay? Free in the fact that I'm not going to have to buy another add-on for Tripwire Enterprise because Data Collector is, in fact, dollar work, okay? The only, the only, I don't want to say hit, that's the wrong word, but as I said earlier, we need to utilize a, a network device license because this node, FreeBSD node, is viewed as a network device within TE. Okay, so um, we've covered creation of the node, we've covered baselining that node. Are we done? Let's take a look. Maybe we're done with the baseline. Almost. So, FreeBSD, oh, I'm sorry, if I refresh. My apologies. Our FreeBSD node has 25 elements. Uh, our, our node that's currently being baseline is up to 24, so we've got one left. Now, when agent-based scanning, monitoring, evaluation takes place, it's quite fast. I can baseline a node, this is say a Windows 10 node, using our critical change audit rules, which will capture uh, 2,000, 2,500, maybe up to 4,000, maybe 5,000 elements from that node, depending how, on how that node is, is configured, right? If it's just the basic OS, 2,000, 2,500 elements. If I've got other things installed there, right? And our rules are looking for those, as our rules do, right? We, we don't monitor everything. Right? The rules tell us what we're going to monitor, where we're going to look, what we're going to do once we find something there. Okay? But uh, so the, the agent-based baselining, for example, that 2,500 elements, I can walk through, I can get through that in 20 seconds, 15 or 20 seconds. This methodology that we're using here is a bit more time consuming. This baselining of those 25 elements will take about 15 minutes. And the same when I'm running my check task, okay? I'm gonna run the check task because we do the same thing, right? We evaluate what the endpoint looks like with what is in our rule, okay? Real-time evaluation. Take real-time in quotes because we're not doing real-time. But what, it current, what its current state is, that's a better way to state it. Okay, I see, stand by, I see a question here. Can I pull things like port services, adult software, et cetera? Yes, as long as I can do that from the command line, Bear with me. Oh, something like a net set. You can type too, right? So I can pull whatever ports are open. I have to filter it to get what I want, but absolutely. Anything that I can do from the command line, I can basically build an element out of. So I can ls-l and then pipe that through walk, pipe that through grep, pipe that through sed, et cetera, whatever. So as long as, long as I can get the output I'm looking for from a, from a system command, absolutely. Okay, so changes, reporting. Now, if let's go look at Tripwire Data Collector quickly, okay? So I've got uh, a node group down here, my Data Collector node. So here is my Tripwire Data Collector. It runs on a Windows machine. So this, I believe, is Windows 2016. And I'm monitoring three nodes, CentOS 7, Windows 2016, Windows 2019, okay? And again, this is on a scheduled basis. I've got a task that runs that says, please go do this. Okay, and whatever policies these nodes have associated with them. So within Tripwire Enterprise Policy Manager, I define which nodes are scoped to a specific policy. Okay, so I believe I have this Windows 2016 node scoped to PCI, right? So if I go look in my reports, and here we go, TDC Windows 2016, 
Uh, now that I've evaluated that node against my PCI policy, I can take a look at all of my failed tests. Okay. Oh, sorry, passed. Yes, I mean failed. And let me refresh here too, because I'm, I'm sure it's looking for me. Okay, so for example, here's my PCI policy, right? I'm, I'm evaluating this test. What is my password history? Right? Equal to 24? No, I failed that test. So again, here's our remediation guidance, right? We can take this report, attach it to a ticket, send it off to whoever needs to take care of it. So Tripwire Data Collector allows us to do both FIM and policy, okay? Now, um, I, know, I realize that was really short, sweet, and to the point, okay? But it is possible to do this with unsupported operating systems. I have uh, unsupported, or I had an agentless evaluation set up against Atomic, Red Hat Atomic. FreeBSD, of course, Photon. No, this is just standalone standalone Photon that I downloaded VM, from VMware. It has nothing to do with, uh, with vCenter, okay? And Solaris 10, we don't have an agent for Solaris 10 anymore, so I did the same thing on Solaris 10, right? Now, in that respect, uh, the very simple find this directory, do an ls-l, et cetera, et cetera, that pipeline that I used to generate that element data, much different on Solaris, right? You had to have to get on the OS, test your command line, right? Test it out, make sure you're able to find what you're looking for, build your element, carry on. Okay, so we are now three minutes away from the bottom of the hour. I've touched on everything I want to touch on. I hope this had made sense. And what I'd like to do is go to the Q&A, okay? Here. Yes, TE Data Collector is a separate product. It is dollarware that is an add-on for the Tripwire Enterprise Council. Okay, that was from Howard. Next from Ahmed, is there a way to do agentless monitoring for Windows, sir? Yes, there is. The only reason I'm doing Linux here is because I am a Unix Linux guy. I have been since 84. So that's my forte. We could use WMI to do Windows monitoring, okay? Or SMB, right? Show me something on the system that I can pull back, evaluate, put into an element for my baseline, and moving forward, I can evaluate the output of what I just did, right? SMB call, WMI call, whatever, okay? So yes, it's possible. Another one from Howard. I missed the beginning. What types of nodes are the agent that's configured as? Just curious. As well. Okay, I think we covered that, right? They're, they are considered network devices within TE, so it's going to consume a network license. Ken Dale says, what about WTI devices similar to a Cisco device? I don't know what WTI is. Can you, can you, Put a little more detail in there, or maybe in the group chat. I'm not sure, is, is WTI a manufacturer? It, let me just back up and say this. If we can access, access a device with Telnet or SSH, we can monitor it. Log in with credentials, execute the show, run the show config, or whatever's analogous to that device, Pull that data back and then either create the baseline or evaluate against the baseline. When we, when we find a change and we want to promote it into our baseline, we simply walk down the tree of our rules and it's the same process, right? I've got this, I want to promote this element into my baseline, I simply promote. So here, promote selected versions, I'm gonna use a, a template etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and I'm done, and I've now promoted that change into my baseline, giving me a new known good state. Again, Tripwire Enterprise, one baseline per node, per endpoint monitor. Let's see, another one here from Brian. In the case of monitoring open ports to be a net stack, it can be challenging to filter the results. Any suggestions on how to filter slash track open ports via a net stack query and TE? Off the top of my head, no, but I'm sure we could build something. If you want to drop me an email, I'm sure I could help you out. 
jsalmi, J-S-A-L-M-I, at tripwire.com. Okay. Now, these rules that I just used, I'm going to make available for you to play with if you want. Okay. I'm going to upload the free BSD rules to forums.tripwire.com. And if you go to the header, upcoming webinar 42721, that should be close to the top in the forums, uh, or you can search for it. I'm going to deposit the rules in there along with a little readme on how to install them, et cetera. Okay. So by all means, play with it, right? And you know, if you got something you find something interesting to monitor, by all means add it. And if you're so inclined, send them my way. I'd love to add them to my library. Any additional questions? Let's see here. Nothing yet. Brian, Douglas County, Douglas County, Colorado. If so, I used to live there, Castle Rock. Okay, here's another one from Fabian. Will there be agentless monitoring rules that we can grab from the portal to, for us to use to monitor Solaris 10? You know what? I'll tell you what. I will upload my Solaris 10 rules as well. Okay, I'll drop them into forums at tripwire.com in that post I referred to, uh, have that up. And again, if you if you modify them, play with them, figure out something cool to monitor, please send them back my way. I'd like to add it to my library. Got a question from Grant. From what I've read, the suggested rule for code was, oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. I will, thank you. It should be about 10 as a data set back as a comment. From what I've read, the suggested rule for code should be around 10 as the data is sent back to the I haven't found a max. When you say 10, are you talking 10 elements, 10 rules? Um, if it's rules, I've got... Hmm, do I have here? Still looking good? Yeah, okay. I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 15, 16, 17. Is that, is that what you're referring to, Grant? Perhaps? If not, I will try to address that. Also, also, I'm going to take all, we're going to take all the questions that were asked here and put them in the forum post and include the answers with them. Okay, so please just feel free to, if you have any more, fire in my way. And if I can't answer them like this one, I don't know exactly what you're talking about with 10, the limit. Uh, I will formulate an answer and get that up to you. Okay. Well, I hope you found this useful because, uh, again, it offers a, a little more flexibility with Tripwire Enterprise. If, uh, if you want to monitor that John's network switch that I built in my garage, you can do it. If you want to monitor Open Solaris or fill in the blank, as long as there's SSH to it, right? We can get there. Or tell me. No, please tell me. That is all I have for today. So thank you. Thank you very much for showing up and uh, bearing with my screen refresh issues. And I really hope this was helpful. Um, that's all I've got. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, John. I just have a few closing words. Uh, thank you, John, for a great event, and thank you to our audience for attending. We hope we've, you found the session informative and useful for you. I know we did have a few people that joined late or had to leave early, so we'll make sure that everyone receives a link to the recording later today. If you'd also like to receive proof of attendance, please sure to make sure to respond to that email that we send out later today. Um, and as part of today's event, we did a little drawing, so we're giving away three Tripwire swag bags to attendees from today's event. So congrats to Mark B, Carl L, and Hikmet J. We will be reaching out to you later today with your prize. Um, so we do hope you'll join us for future trips and tips and tricks sessions. Uh, we have a few coming up, so make sure to check out our schedules at tripwire.com. Uh, but thank you, everyone, again for joining, and I hope that you all have a great day. See you.